There are many famous locomotives throughout history. Some of them are icons, and some are remembered because of what they've done throughout certain events. This is the history of City of Truro. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe. You better subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll make this channel get one step closer to reaching 1,000 subscribers. My dream goal ever since I started YouTube. Sort of. Or like when I started like saying I wanted to get 1,000 subscribers. But whatever. You can also check out my polls on the straw poll, as well as my DeviantArt page and my Twitter. And the links are all in the description. Without further ado, let's talk about City of Truro. Okay, so City of Truro is a GWR 3700 class, more commonly known as the City Class. He was built by George Jackson Church Ward, Church Ward in 1903 at Swindon Works. City of Truro was semi-rebuilt in 1911 and in 1915, for some reason, I don't know why. And received the number 33717 at the end of 1912. Alright, this is a big one. City of Truro is most known for allegedly being the quote-unquote first steam locomotive to reach 100 miles per hour. Technically, that's kind of like the first one where like people started like say, "Hey, one hundred miles per hour," and this may be an unpopular opinion, but I do think Sea Truro was the first to reach one hundred. I don't, I don't want to go, I don't want to go too deep into it. I've already shared like my unpopular Thomas friend's opinions on my Demonar page, and I kind of don't want to like get into a whole like American Civil War based on this kind of topic. Now, the moment when City of Truro supposedly went 100, mi went 100 miles per hour was on May 9th, 1904. City of Truro was pulling a fast mail train from Plymouth to Paddington. Paddington. The railway magazine writer named Charles Roe Mar Mar Marten, Marten, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Timed the train's run on a stopwatch and noticed that it took City of Truro 8.8 .8 seconds to drive between two quarter mile posts while descending from an incline. Very technical. I know. <laughs> If you take accurate calculations into consideration, that means that City of Truro was going around 102 miles per hour, or 164 kilometers, if you're, that, if you're those kind of people. Also, postal worker near, also postal worker was also timing City of Truro as well, and agreed to charge a statement about City of Truro's speed, meaning that there were two witnesses to seeing City of Truro going 100 miles per hour. Now, the Great Western really didn't really want to, didn't really want anyway to report didn't really want anyone to report Seatura's speed publicly, as they thought they might lose their reputation for safety, as Seatura was going a little over the requisite speed limit. It was going 100 miles per hour, and that makes sense, you know? But a couple of newspapers in Plymouth spread the butter on the bread of the whole story publicly. There is a problem to this whole story, though, and that's the fact that Seatura's speed wasn't officially recorded, and there weren't any speed professionals on board the train, or any dynamometer cars, or and, or to accurately calculate the speed Sea of Truro was going. Yeah. So, no one could have really been sure that Sea of Truro was going 100 miles, 100 miles per hour. But that begs the question. How did it gain so much popularity, popularity over the years that it was just a debatable rumor? And to answer that, we have the time skip four years to 1908, where Charles Rao Mar Mar Martin, I'm going to say Martin, confirms that the supposed 100 miles per hour locomotive to be a city, uh, officially be a Sea of Truro, and was officially confirmed in 19... 22 by the Great Western Railway. Because of all of this, the Great Western Railway decided to use City of Truro for publicity. In 1931, the company didn't want to preserve the engine that was literally making them money for some reason, while the other city class engines were being withdrawn. Luckily, the best GWR chief engineer, Charles Colette, managed to get like managed to get City of Truro to be donated to the national collection. Okay, off topic for a little bit here, but can I just say that Charles Colette is like an absolute mad lad, like in the GWR com community? I'm gonna say it because I'm right. He built the 1400 class, which is the basis for Oliver from Tom's and Friends, the 5700 class, which is Duck's basis. He even built the Manor class, which includes my man, Bradley Manor. You know, it's what, it's what Daniel was based off of. I, I even said in the first episode of House of Adventures. Charles even had the absolute audacity to mock British aristocrats by inventing a hybrid engine designed, designed by using the boiler from uh, a Duke class locomotive and the frames from a, from a Bulldog class. The balls on this man. Alright, fast forward to 1957 and Senior Truro was returned to service by the British Railway's Western Region. Because at this time, like, because at this time, uh, modernization, you know, like, British Railways, the four come together. Yeah. He was then withdrawn again in 1961, but in 1962 he was taken to Swindon's GWR Museum known as Steam, which is definitely an acronym for something, but I don't know. City of Truro stayed at the museum until 1984 when he, had to be for, when he had to be restored for the Great Western Railway's 150th anniversary celebration. City of Truro then went to the Netherlands in 1989 to represent Great Britain and the National Railway Museum for the 150th anniversary celebrations for the Netherlands Railways. Fun fact about this moment, the engine who was supposed to represent Great Britain was actually the famous A4 known as Mallard. But Mallard failed the boiler test of 
shortly before it, and next in line was Say Truro. So Say Truro just barely made it in due to a technicality. That's that's awesome, you know. Pretty notable moment, kind of a Chad moment. You know? In 2004, Say Truro was restored for his 100th year anniversary of his supposed 100 miles per hour run. In 2010, Say Truro was repainted for the 175th anniversary of the Great Ocean Railway. Great Ocean Railway. And that's basically all I can say about City of Shiro. Say what you want about Flying Scotsman to be like the first steam engine to go 100 miles an hour, the first one to be recorded. But I personally believe City of Shiro was first in the first 100. Fun fact about this video is that I got all the information about City of Shiro going like 100 miles per hour from this one guy who goes under YouTube user named Train of Thought. Definitely go check out his content. He tells me some stuff that he probably didn't know about steam locomotives. Like, did you know there's like, there's like this miniature rally on like the east coast of Great Britain? Don't think you did. He makes some pretty interesting videos. Like, definitely go check him out. Like, I don't know. Like, he recently made a video um about City of Truro and like his latest video that he just recently uploaded was about like um uh the A A fifty five Decapod. You know, like that's the engine that was like made to like explicitly to accelerate. That's what the, I haven't seen that one yet, but I should. I'll definitely go you know, check it out. So yeah. Go check out his videos. Also, um, watch my videos and subscribe and check out my post on Check out my Twitter and my Demonar. All three links are in the description. As well as Train of Thoughts YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys next time.